I am David Delagardel. I am 18 years old. Um, I go to Cowan High School and uh, work here at the workshop with Andrew. I'm Andy Davis and I'm from Newcastle, Indiana. And I am 17 years old and I'm a high school senior. One day we were walking back from the woods and was, we had these little sticks that were using as swords to chop down corn. And, and then we were walking back and I was this thought that, man, that would be awesome if we had real swords and if we could make our own swords and forge our swords. And so we thought about it a while and we, were, we decided that we were going to do it. We were going to make a sword. When we started out, our moms, of course, you know, teenage guys and fire and metal doesn't mix so well. My parents really are supportive of my work because I, you know, I love metalworking, but I'm also, I try to do a lot of traditional artwork of my own. I like painting and drawing. So when my parents learned that this was more of a, an art than just making weapons, they were pretty supportive of it. We get most of our designs from the Lord of the Rings and the Narnia series. Um, Lord of the Rings has the dwarven language and they also have the elven flowing lines and curves and everything and that really inspires a lot of our weapons. Also the Narnian, we do the uh, satyr swords and all sorts of great designs that um, Weta recently made up for this sort of thing. And so we, we try to incorporate other people's designs and other people's thoughts into what we do, but we also like to make it our own. So it's really a combination of tried things and natural looks, but we also like to take our own view at it. Some people, you know, they take the easy route, they take shortcuts and they'll get the cheap steel that looks cool but really isn't. They'll just grind it, no forging, and say done. You know, it's a shiny sword, but uh, for us, we take a little more time to do it historically accurate. And uh, this right here took about five months, maybe four. Um, probably like three hours a week on it. Our personal style, we really, we really like historic, you know, Viking or Nordic stuff. I looked up in a Viking dictionary um, for a good name. I think this one is uh, Grundag. It says Grundag the Old on it. Uh, not a lot of meaning. I know the name had some meaning to it at the time. I forget it now, but yeah. I just definitely want to give it a historic feel. And a lot of our time we spend, you know, doing research about actual historical blades. The first process is getting a good tool steel. Tapering the tip, bringing it to a point. Um, after that, we move on to flattening the blade and giving it its beveled edge. The handle can be any kind of shape or size you want. You can leave it plain or you can give it a twist, which a lot of people really like. It's a kind of grip and it gives it a characteristic that you know you don't see usually. You get the steel hot enough, it twists like butter, and it looks really, really cool when you twist it. Right now, it's at a stress state where all the molecules have been rearranged by forging it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat it up and let it cool, which will anneal it. And then I'm going to harden it by heating it up and dipping it in warm oil. And then it will harden the crystals back up and it'll be a forge blade. To get the dents out of the blade, it's just really grinding. And after I get the basic shape after grinding, I'm gonna do more of the uh, cutting edge. So. You grind the blade usually uh, against the shape of the blade uh, to get a good edge. And then what we we will wire brush the handle to make sure it gets uh, no rough marks on it or anything. So that would It'll get a nice metallic finish. And then we usually uh, engrave our MAD in dwarven letters on the base of the blade. I started selling just to some kids at my church. They're big knife enthusiasts. It really wasn't selling a superior product to these kids. It was more just selling these twisted tang knives. It's a bigger market than you'd think blacksmithing. There's the group of people who want, you know, historic swords and then the people who want, you know, architectural stuff and some guys try to focus on one or the other area and I think why it's good that me and Andy work together is, um, you know, we both have different styles and we can really encourage each other and work in different ways. We are in each other's work, it's the yeah, goal. Yeah, that happens much, too, we kind so. of, uh, we start working on each other's things and then just get, start ruining things. It's hard to find a good school with blacksmithing, but... Uh, yeah, I, if, if it's possible, I'd love to keep doing this. Even if in the college years we stop doing it for a while, we'll get right back to it. Because, you know, it's in our blood and I love to do it. And I can definitely see myself, you know, as a little old geezer who can barely lift a hammer, forging away in my workshop in the future. So. Yeah.